Hello viewers, I welcome you all from HLT of Tech channel. In our previous video, we saw uh, how we can deploy a SharePoint server farm for very large organizations in which thousands of users are there and they are uh, dealing with the million of documents and all the farm is capable of search services as well. So we have talked uh, a lot about uh, every server role and now we are going to see how we can configure a software load balancer uh, so that our client requests that are coming from uh, let me show you here uh, this was my previous video uh, this was the diagram uh, that I explained my in my previous video uh, now I am going to explain that thousands of users are coming to your sites and in your sites there is a primary site and there is a secondary site in primary sites there are two web front end servers that are dealing with the client request and in secondary sites there are also two web front end servers that are uh, supposed to uh, take take over the load of primary site as soon as the primary site is failed so uh, we are going to see that uh, scenario this is my primary site i have primary database server i have a uh, application server and i have two web front end servers and this is my secondary site that site is similar uh, up till now I have done nothing I have create uh, initially I created a database server after that I created one primary server then I created two additional servers with a dedicated role of web front end front end role and then I created one more app server that was uh, a part of this farm and logically it is separated to another site but physically it's a part of one farm okay uh, let me show you here that as soon as you add the data here if I go into my central admin and in cent uh, central admin if I go into manage servers in this form here you can see that right now I have two servers so as soon as you create a create multiple servers here that is this one uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 uh, logically they are segregated but physically they will reside in one farm that is this one okay so there will be six server here and listed and all will have uh, the defined services here right now I am going to uh, uh, develop a very similar very simple form for uh, videos so I have configured all my services in one form but logically uh, ideally they should uh, the web application server should be separated your search service should be separated and your application server should be separated your distributed cache server sh should be a separate server as already elaborated in my previous video so uh, in primary and secondary db you have configured high availability replication and now the url of your web application that is your site is hltftechcompany.com so hltftechcompany is actually the uh, site name uh, so by using this url you are going to access the uh, users are going to access the uh, site's data so what you will do among them uh, you as you know that uh, this site is based on the dns as you are working in your on premise requirement uh, on premise environment you will go into dns and in DNS you are going to add uh, a DNS entry that is against the WFE IP address of HLTF tech company that will be mentioned in forward lookup zone okay so that in within your domain your uh, IP address of WFE is uh, the name resolution of the IP address of WFE one is uh, resoluted to this name and same for this one so the name is same for both of these servers so as soon as HLTF tech com the, the user type this prefix this name will go to uh, the request of this name will go to the DNS DNS will resolve the name either on this IP or this IP it is the beauty of Microsoft DNS that it ideally divides the data uh, the request evenly among all the entries of the same name okay so it will ideally thousand requests are coming uh, in one second or 10 seconds what it uh, what dns will do it will direct uh, the 500 requests to this wfe one ip address and 500 requests to wfe two ip address okay 
so once your primary site fails what uh, what you will do all you need to do is to go into your dns delete the these entries and instead of these uh, uh, entries you are going to define the name of uh, this url against the wfe3 ip address and wfe4 ip address so after the name resolution is successfully updated among the domain all your user request will now be uh, uh, redirected to your fault tolerance site okay so in this way you can easily configure a software load balancer using your dns methodology let me show you here as well this is my domain dns as if i go and search for dns mgmt dot msc is the short form to access the dns uh, in forward lookup zones i am going into my site and here all you need to do is to add a new host you will name it the name will be hltf tech company that will be the name of your url of your web application that i have already shown you here this one and it will be defined against the ip of your uh, wfe1 server in which your web front end service of is configured so these steps you will follow for each wfe server and after that uh, your dns will ultimately redirect the request of uh, this uh, url by name resolution to appropriate wfes okay if you are using four wfe servers at a time or you think that the two wfes are not enough uh, for particular task and uh, the load is increasing you can simply add one more wfe here you can simply add two more wfes here by just adding the dns names so in this way you can easily configure your <coughs> software load balancer i thank you all for watching this video and guys subscribe my channel who are new visit visitors and enjoy watching and exploring the new features of sharepoint 19 and on-premise environment